In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to make this look like two amazing health and mana globes. I'll be making use of free public assets so you can actually download these assets yourself and make these globes for your own game. I'll be going over the adjustments I've been making to the asset at the end of this tutorial. Let's first start up Godot and let's get these two health globes in our game. I'll be adding these globes to a project you may already know from the Enemy Logic and Combat series. Everything you see in this tutorial is 100% tutorial content on my channel, so if you haven't seen this series yet, go check them out after the video. I'll make sure there's some links for you to follow at the end. Now to get started, let's first add the actual globe to the world. To do that, I'm going to be hiding the YouTube map right here so it's a little bit more clear to see the orange lines which is going to be guiding us in sizing this all up properly. I've already added a health globe to the graphical user interface. The graphical user interface is a canvas layer. The canvas layer will always follow the camera. So these globes will always be where we want them to be, uh, overlapping the world basically. So for the health globe, I've already added it right here. It's a control node renamed to health globe. And I've added three texture rectangles, a globe full, a globe transparent, and a decorating corner. Now, the order of these is quite important. I will get to that later in this tutorial. For the globe full, we'll put it on with expand on. We'll set its size to 235 by 235, and we'll be adding this texture. It's the globe, and it's a full. It's not transparent at all. With that, we'll add it right there. Now for the globe transparent, we're gonna do exactly the same. We're gonna make it exactly the same size, but instead of the full texture, I'll be making use of this semi-transparent texture with some shadows drawn so that the globe will actually feel like it's a ball, will feel like it's a little bit 3D-ish. We'll add that texture as well. For the decorating corner, we need it to be a little bit smaller, so we're going to put this 185, 185, and with expand on, we'll add this decorative corner. Now, of course, I've experimented with the sizes, so I know exactly what they need to be. You may, if you use different art, you may have to uh, take this differently. Now, the health globe itself, the control container, is currently this small orange. Uh, box on the top left of the screen. We need to make that bigger. We need that to be 250 by 250 Now we have a layout. We're gonna put these in the right spot and at the same time make sure that it is responsive So any sort of screen size can handle this. So for the layout We're gonna put the control node in the bottom left That will immediately put everything in the bottom left because these two textures being children of health globe will follow anywhere where health globe goes now for the globe full, we'll put this layout in the top right. That will put it in the top right of the health globe container. We'll do exactly the same for the transparent, so they, those two overlap. And we put the decorating piece in the bottom left. That way the globe fits nicely into the decorative piece. Now that we have that, we have the sort of the design of the health globe. Now we need to add the texture rectangle that is actually going to be representing our health. So let's do that next. Right, let's now add our health. For our health, we're gonna go over the globe transparent. We'll be hiding it for a second, just so we can see what we're actually doing. Now in the globe full, we'll add a child and that'll be the texture progress. And under the texture progress, we'll also add a tween. And that tween we'll be using in the code to make the health go up and down in a smooth way. Now with the texture progress selected, we're gonna go over to nine patch stretch, turn that to on, that way our rectangle doesn't resize when we add a texture, and we set its minimum size to 210 by 210. Now under textures, we can add the progress texture, and that will be a white circular shape. You can make this in Krita, Photoshop, Paint, wherever you want. Mine has a little bit of a gray tint, you can just use a pure white as well, doesn't really matter. Now here under the uh, range section, I'm gonna set the value to 70. The max value is 100, so now we'll see a 70% fill texture progress so we can actually see what we're doing. As you can see, currently it's being focused on the top left corner of its parent, the parent being globe full. So we're gonna go over to layout and we're gonna set this to center. That way it's gonna be nicely drawn over the globe. Now you see that currently is filled up from the left to the right. So we're gonna go over to fill mode and we're gonna set that from bottom to top. That way it's functioning like we would expect a health globe to function. Now for the tint, I'm gonna go over to tint here under the texture 
and we're gonna go to the progress and we're gonna set that to a full red. And I'm also going to be adding 190 here under the transparency. And that way we reveal a little bit of the uh, grayish uh, patching that is uh, the globe full texture. And that way we get a little bit more depth to it. Now all that is left for us to do is to unhide the globe transparent and by doing so you'll see the effect of having the correct draw order. The texture progress is a child of globe full so it will be drawn in front of globe full but it is uh, higher up in the node tree than globe transparent or in other words globe transparent is lower in the node tree and therefore it will be drawn later. So by doing that we'll nicely cut off the, uh, the edge of the texture progress so that it doesn't um, fill half the edge up anymore and we'll be adding all the shadows that we got in that semi-transparent picture to get us a little bit of the 3D feel that we're looking for. So with that done, all we have to do is mirror this to the other side of the graphical user interface for our mana globe. To mirror this health globe into a mana globe, we're gonna be closing the health globe here. We don't need info on all those nodes. So we're gonna duplicate this with Ctrl D and we'll be renaming this into a mana globe. Now with that selected, that control node mana globe selected, we're gonna go over to layout and we're gonna put this in the bottom right as this needs to be on the other side of the graphical user interface. Now we need to basically mirror everything that we have done when it comes to the positioning of the health globe. So we're gonna to go to globe full. We're gonna set this in the top left instead of the top right. Globe transparent, top left instead of top right and deco corner to bottom right instead of bottom left. Now, of course, this corner needs to switch. So with that node selected, you can flip horizontal right here, turn this to on and it will be drawn in the correct place. Now comes uh, something of personal preference. Currently we got these two white spots as if the sun is coming from the top right. If you prefer the situation where the sun will be high in the sky, then of course you have to flip the globe full and the globe transparent as well. That's a personal preference that you may not have, then you can skip those, uh, those two uh, flips. Now with the texture progress, we're gonna go over to tint, we're gonna go over to this red and we'll change that into a noise darkish blue and that's the reason why I always add white texture um, textures to my texture progress bars that way I can just set their color through Godot instead of me having to make red circles and blue circles and whatnot circles. So with that we got a health and a mana globe. Now all we need to do is code to make sure that they go up and down. Now I only have the code inside the game to making health go up and down and the health uh, uh, statistics. I don't have any many co mana cost statistics yet or in our uh, skill database. So I'll only be programming this for the health part, but that shouldn't stop you from figuring out how to do this for the mana part as well. Let's get going on that. So to update our health globe, the first thing I'll do is I'll unhide the YouTube map so that when we fight these skeletons, we can actually see where we're walking. These skeletons already got quite some code underneath them from the combat series and enemy logic series. Let's click quickly go over how that is necessary for our health globe to update properly. First of all, these skeletons are making use of the range single target skill. They're making use of the ice spear specifically. This range single target skill already detects coalitions and on a coalition detection it's verifying if it collided with the player and if the person or the entity that casts the spell is the enemy. In that case we call the on hit function on the player. Now in the player script we have that on hit function and we are deducting the damage from the current HP and we're printing the current HP or at least that's what we did in previous enemy logic episodes because we didn't have a health globe yet to visually represent that things are working. So we no longer have to print that to the editor, we can now make use of the health globe. The current HP that's being updated is a variable that lives on the top and also on the top lives a variable called HP. HP is what you can see as the maximum HP and that is of course what the globe, the health globe needs to start out with. When the game loads, the health globe needs to look at HP and say, okay, that's my maximum value and my current value so that we got a 100% filled health globe. Then it constantly will have to be looking for current HP to update itself properly with the HP that the player currently has. Now to do that, we're gonna go over to the map scene. We're gonna to go to the script of the graphical user interface and here I've already coded this in. It's only a couple of lines, so let's quickly go over that and test this out. 
We first set two variables on the top when the node has finished loading with onReady. We de define the health globe and the health globe tween both as node references to the texture progress and the texture progress tween that we have been adding in this tutorial. Then under the ready function, like I said, we have to set the max value and the current value of the globe to the HP of the player so that the player starts out with a fully filled globe. So that is what these two lines there, uh, right there do. Then under the process uh, function, so that is going to be the delta, that's, or this process function will be called on every frame of the game. So every frame of the game will be updating the globes. We could also make the health change, uh, send out a signal, but if you have a lot of enemies and maybe also health regeneration, you're going to get a lot of moments that that function will be called. So actually uh, calling this in the delta function instead of using signals will make that the game has less things to do, but the player has enough updates that it looks all smooth and well. So we're going to be taking the update globes on every frame. Now the update globes is going to take the new HP as the current HP out of the player script and is then going to be calling the tween as the node reference we defined up there and we're going to be interpolating a property. The property we want to interpolate lives on the health globe, again this node reference. The value that we, or the property that we want to interpolate is the value, that's the same value as we set right here at the start to the maximum HP of the player. We start this tween at the current value of the health globe and we tween towards the new HP that we've gotten out of the player script. Now we tween this in 0.1 seconds and we make use of translinear and ease in out as our tweening uh, methods. Then we start this tween up. So this tween will be updating the health bar every single frame of the game. Now we can play this and we can walk around. I'll select the spell to fight these skeletons. And as they attack me, you can see my health going down, but they're not strong enough. They can't kill me fast enough before I kill them. Now, currently our health stays the same at about 40% in this case, and it's not being updated because we're not gaining any health. Let's quickly program in just a couple of lines some health regeneration in here so that our health bar uh, uh, grows back up. And with that, we have our health bar complete. Then I'll show you what texture adjustments you need to make and where you can download these textures from and then you can make your own health globes. Let's get going. For the health regeneration, I'm back here on the player script and I've added another variable called HP regen and I've set it to 20. 20 might sound like a very big value, but you're going to be multiplying this with the delta from the physics process engine so it'll actually be pretty small. What we do is under the physics process delta, we'll be calling a new function called HP regeneration and we'll be passing the delta value to it. Now we can also call this under the process function, but the thing is the process, the delta in the process function is equal to the FPS of the game. If you have a lag spike, it means you're going to be regenerating, regenerating less HP. If you've got a quicker computer or a quicker mobile, you can generate more HP per second as there will be more frames in the game. And that's not desired outcome. The physics process engine has a fixed frequency. So this delta is always going to be the same amount of delta frames in every second. Therefore, an HP regeneration function is better called in the physics process engine than in the process engine. Now, of course, we need to be adding that function to the script. I'll be doing that right here between on hit and on heal. We'll be adding HP regen, which is going to receive that delta. Now, it's going to take the current HP and it's going to be adding the HP regen, that 20 we set at the top, uh, multiplied by the delta. That makes that value very small. And we're going to be verifying that if the current HP becomes larger than the HP, so it becomes larger than the maximum value, then we set the current HP equal to HP. That way the player cannot overgrow its HP pool bigger than it, it should be possible. Now if this, if we play the game, we should see that when we attack these skeletons, oh, let's, let's take the Nova skill for some change, is attacking us now, we'll kill both of these guys. And as you can see, our HP bar is now updating slowly with a little bit of health regeneration. So with that, we got a pretty sweet health bar. Let's go over those textures and where you can download them from and the changes you have to make to make exactly something like this.
So the textures come from opengameart.org. They are from Wormheart. This is a CC0, no attribution required asset, and it has all of these assets together. So I've only been making use of two of the textures that are inside this pack, and you can create a beautiful graphical user interface with it. I, for example, also with these backgrounds and this little slot icon right here, I've also given an update to the skill bar that you can see right underneath there. Now you can download this as a Photoshop file and in Photoshop, I've isolated the layers. So uh, this is where, where it comes out with. And here you can see that this layer is the health globe and this Esquinas, I think the creator is Spanish, um, is the actual corner. So I've isolated those, dragged those into a new Photoshop, um, Photoshop file and I've saved that. Now with that save, I've made sure that I've got this globe filled and I've got the uh, decoration piece right there. I've already turned that right here in Photoshop. And I've also, in Photoshop, I've created a mask on top of the isolated globe. And that mask, I've then given some transparency. I believe I made it 80% transparent, remained 20% of the original texture. That has given me this globe transparent, this globe transparent, I then loaded into Krita. Krita is an open source drawing program and I've added the shadows to it to make on the opposite side where the sun hits the glass to make sure that it has that 3D feel to it. Now with those three uh, textures, I'm actually not using this one anymore, but I kept it for reference and this corner piece, you can make exactly the same what I made. So that's all you gotta do. Good luck making your health globes. That was it for today, guys. I hope you like it. If you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on any videos. And as always, I also stream my own game development on Twitch live every Tuesday and Thursday. And I got a Discord server if you have got any questions about this tutorial or want to talk game dev in general. The links and the schedule to all those things are down in that description box below. I hope to see you there one day. And until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.